focus can be taken away from the Father, right? And as you can see, this, this time is going to be all about idol worship. But before we get started on that, I want to talk about something from the very first lesson. You know, I only went briefly into it on being wayward, which is another reason, you know, to take your focus away from the Father, right? So let's just start this right now. So as in the first lesson, we learned that being in this walk, it is a must to obey the Father's commandments at all costs. With that being right. said, our ancestors became wayward in everything they did and said. They wanted something for nothing. They wanted all the perks of obeying the Father without actually doing so. All right. So what is the meaning of being wayward? All right. We have so rare. It's uh, Hebrew 5637, to be stubborn, to be defiant, to be obstinate, to be rebellious. And right. we have Proverbs 7, 7 She is loud and wayward. Her feet do not stay at home. Who is she? Israel. Could be Israel? Okay. The Hebrew verb for rebel can also mean to be stubborn. This is the same root used in the simile like a stubborn heifer. Mm -hmm. Huh? The similarity between Israel and a stubborn heifer is emphasized by the, re by the repetition of the same term. So we have Hosea 4, 16, like a stubborn heifer. Israel is stubborn. I mean, yeah, that's said it, right? Mm -hmm. It's stubborn. Can Yahuwah now feed them like a lamb in a broad pasture? So what does that mean, Hosea 4, 16? What could that mean? Exactly what about Israel stubborn? Keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. OK. Anybody else? Besides Moray, because you know he, he, he be itching. Huh? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Oh, so you said somebody needed the mic? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, 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 needed, she needed spotlight. Okay, I'm going to verify. She's on the roof. All right. Good. The mic was no? I think that was operator error. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's operator error. All right, so let's keep on going. Hosea 7.14, they do not cry to me from the heart, but they wail upon their beds for, gain and for grain and wine. They gnash themselves. They rebel against me. Jeremiah 28.16, therefore thus says you who will behold, I will remove you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die because you have uttered rebellion against you who. Our rebellious acts have continued to allow us to turn aside and ultimately disregard the Father's commandments and his Torah. Disobeying the Father will cause trouble and result in all things that are meant for darkness instead of light. What was the main cause of action that kept provoking the Father's anger amongst the people? And I already, already tell that it's idolatry, but what type of rebellious act took their attention away from the Father the most? Um, you're going to skip that right here. All right. So question time. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Question time. What are some examples of idolatry that you all can think of? Don't 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 all speak at once. Okay. Golden calf. Are you talking about Israel? Well, modern modern times. From 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 today, what can you think of? Somebody somebody need a mic. Somebody need a mic. Yeah. Money. Mm-hmm. Just following the ways of the world. Just throw them out there. Also, phones, technology can be one. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Discarding the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay. Loving yourself more than everything else. Material things. Good. People, 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 one, one another. Uh, Leadership, for an example, people can idolize leadership. Um, uh, people that are quote unquote famous idols, you know, as they call them, the American idols. I know you, you skipped over that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, putting everything yeah. before the Most High. Everything like what? Everything that you love, um, material value, 
uh, people, fame, fortune, um, idol worshiping, um, false idols, yourself. Okay. Christianity. What about money can turn you away from the father? Yeah. Because you can't serve two masters. You're either going to love one or hate the other. And money is the root of all evil. The love of money. Yes, the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is to be a tool to be used to help, but most people will use money as as their master you know it, it it can control and consume one's life to the point to where they forget the most high another thing too is uh because sometimes we get in situations where we really need money we're willing to break shabbat in order to pursue work and some people actually think it's okay to work on Shabbat because they got to pay their bills and Yahuwah understands and it's okay. So um, that I think is putting father's commandments behind and putting your job and not trusting that Yahuwah will take care of you. All right. you know? Isn't anything that is set before the father is an idol? So you're saying that money can be used as, as, as a crutch sometimes. Is somebody uh, for the father, but that is not the way that we are supposed to uh, live our lives. Okay. Maury, you was going to say something? Okay. Let's go on to the next one then. What about social media can take you away from the father? Instead of reading and studying the word, it could be a distraction, taking us away from focusing on the word and reading and studying it into uh, reading, you know, being involved in, in things that we really shouldn't be. It's taking time away from the Father. Okay, anybody else? Instead of reading and studying his word. Anybody else in the house? Huh? Putting other things before him, like social media. Who got the mic? Yes, ma'am. You can make her stand up. Um, maybe like when people are on like Instagram or Facebook and you're doing stuff for likes, you want to see how many likes you can get and it gives you that rush, like everybody loves me, you know, look at me, and you keep posting things and it's just... It's just like a rush for you. It's all about you. You want that you glory or esteem. Yeah. It's a gratification. Anybody else? Well, I, I got something for the social media. Okay, you got something for social media. Yeah. All right. I don't need a mic. Yeah, yeah, you know, you need a mic. You need a mic. <laughs> I think you need a mic. It's like as far as like the social media, it can be used as an idol because you're not staying on one teacher. You bounce in from two to maybe five different teachers when you should just stay on that one and get the proper teaching. You're eating off too many tables, right? All right. So what about sports? All right, man. Well, I, I, should, I should say this. Um, let, me, let me ask the men, what about sports? Can turn yeah. you away from the fog. Oh, yeah. They're always on Saturday. <laughs> on <Shabbat. laughs> no, they're always on Sunday. Well, so, especially football. But what about that can turn you away from the fog? I'm looking for something specific when it, when it comes to sports. Pride. Is it pride? What about pride? What, what exactly? What what is pride? How does pride come in? Let's think about it. It's a big thing, right? Yeah. Moray. The, the type of praise and the type of worship that goes in watching the game, you're like really all in and so for it. And 
You know, I think that, you know, is something that we need to be given to the father wholeheartedly. And, you know, you see people, how they react to certain games and in a game and watching the game, mm. their heart, you know, is like, I think this makes father jealous. We're supposed to be doing it for him. I just want to uh, uh, point out something. Uh, that was women that answered that question. I was, yeah, I was about to say that, Maury. You did say the brothers. So that's why I, you know, I was waiting. But I, I would say from 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 being um, sorry from playing sports. Um, when you begin the love, when the love, when the love of that sport. Um, takes a, uh, is uh, you put it before the love of the father and what his desire for your life is that sport now becomes an idol mm -hmm. and it becomes something that you want to do more than to keep his commandments that's right you start eating and breathing that's right instead of the father's word right anybody else incorporated in that is all the cheering all the excitement all the joy the praise and the worship of the players and the scoring all that take place when we should be worshiping and shouting for joy over the father yeah. and we barely do that yeah. but when it comes to a sport they're off the chain yeah. you can't even const constrain them okay mm -hmm. and that same kind of excitement and joy should be done for the father mm -hmm. and here yeah. you're putting it on the game oh yeah oh yeah there was a time where i mean my whole life revolved around nfl football you know yes about Dallas Cowboys, you know, that's all. I and mean, my worst time of the year was when summer when there was no football. I mean, now I could care less about any of it, you know. I mean, that's like I never would have thought I would actually feel that way because I loved football, you know. Not anymore. I, I, I could care less about it, you know. And um, I mean, yeah. it's amazing how it can control you. Yeah, I can concur to that. I can concur to that because I remember when the Cowboys would lose, I would be upset. Don't talk to me. It would be in about Wednesday before I start feeling good and start getting ready for next week. <laughs> and there are people that actually commit major murders and oh, stuff yeah. because their team lost. That's right. You know what amazes me about, uh, you know, and I was never a, a sports fan like that, but what amazes me is how a lot of sports fans can tell you all the stats yes. about yeah. individual players. Yeah. Did you, you ask them about the scripture? Yeah, can't tell you one scripture. Like, I, I don't know what it says. Can you help me? <laughs> uh, I read it somewhere. But when it talks about a specific player, you can tell them how many yardage. Oh, yeah, they got it, they got it down. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah. All right. This is going to be a good one right here. Let's see this one. Now, what about the worldly holidays can turn you away from the Father? I know they all know all about that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. I know y'all got something about this. That was like, picture saying you right in your face. You can that, talk about that picture. That's like in Yoko, Yoko's uh, study hall. Is, is no, <laughs> it's just like uh, if you look at that picture, y'all know we said, you know, we was tuned in to this day. And everybody got there on that little kick. Oh, uh, it, uh, it, he's the reason for the season. Y'all yeah, nah. know those quotes that we used to do. Yeah. So it, it's one of those things that we we grew up in and we live for it until we got it to know the truth. They could change your whole mind state, can it? That you know what was it? really interesting? Even when I was in the Christian church, mm -hmm. uh, Christmas was always the most miserable time for me i mean it was so bad that i just wanted to go find a cave and hide for that whole two weeks you know christmas and new year's because things just happened to me that were just terrible it was like right before christmas eve that i accidentally chopped off my middle finger on my left hand you know and i mean it's it was like everything bad happened on that time. We hated that season. And I was in the, I was a Christian. And I didn't, I think really what it was kind of is that father was already beginning to work on my heart and getting me away from Christianity altogether. And I don't think he was responsible for my finger being cut off. I mean, that was just stupidity with a table saw. 
but it just happens at that time of the year, you know? Wow. And it, it was just amazing, you know, what a transition it was, you know? What, what were you doing with the table? Okay, but um, <laughs> so one of the things about the, the you don't know. <laughs> one of the things about the holidays I've noticed is that even though they're supposed to be you know Christian holidays about the, you know the father and everything else, there's a lot of non Christians who are also celebrating them mm. and oftentimes fighting for those holidays, saying you know it's not just about you all. So and they've developed their own customs and things like that about those holidays. Sometimes those customs actually overtake the supposedly Christian elements of it to the point where it's not even about yeah, they you can't even hide it at own, that point right? like you know it's Santa and stuff like that Easter Bunny and those type of things and we talked about that last week about taking your own mm -hmm, taking your doctrine and mixing it with the truth what? now what okay but before anybody else answers answer me this what about this picture in particular represents an idol Mm -hmm. The tree, the tree. Oh yeah, the tree. Well, yeah, the the, the tree is it's it's paganism, um, it's complete paganism, um, because we're not supposed to bring in anything from outside and decorate it with like silver and gold and things of like that. It's idol worship. Me, this is what the Romans used to do, or the, or the pagans used to do. They used to bring things from outside and put it in their houses and. They used to decorate things like that. And it's complete, absolute, total paganism. And we are not to do this. You know. Isn't the that... presents underneath become our idols. Could be a phone in there, could be a doll in there, you know, could be, you know, things that take us, you know, laptop take us away from father. Mm -hmm. And like Yoko said, the and, ornaments and... itself, right? The ornaments itself could be a <laughs> Anybody else want to say something? Adorning the tree itself. Oh, you said you need a mic? Oh, you need, need a mic. mic. Okay, well, I understand. Yeah. I understand. When you hear you, say that again. Adorning the tree itself oh. with the focus of decorating it yeah. and with the lights and all the mm -hmm. ornaments and the personal stuff that you put on it, it's supposed to signify this is what I represent this household's worshiping of this tree mm -hmm. and the lights and, and setting it in the window. Make sure everybody on the outside see, oh, we're worshiping this tree. This is how beautiful our tree is. Mm, and right. it's all about the tree. Mm. And then when it comes down to that day, you're bowing down, kneeling down, getting these gifts from under the tree. And it's worshiping this tree and not the Father. That's right. You're supposed to be adorning and magnifying, exalting the Father. And here it is, a tree that Ain't you're no worshiping. Ain't no praise going to the Father when you decorate the tree. That's a dead tree that's dying from the time you cut it right. they be going to debt, debt over. <laughs> yeah people go in debt behind the, the lighting the extra the stuff outside the house mm -hmm. all the decorations your electric bill with the lights and all that <laughs> stuff I mean, it's crazy Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You know uh, that's also a time of year where there's more fires in the house because the tree dries and it shorts and those lights cause fires and their houses right. burn down oh yeah it can be all right, so that is a modern day things that you can all think of. Let's let's get into what the the scriptures actually say about it. All right. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. What's, what's going on with the? I say. Maury, could you please speak up? I can't hear you very clearly. You Thank you. Me. Yeah, you can't either, huh? All right. All right, so idolatry, for sale, the worship of images made to represent Yahuwah or any other deity. Mm -hmm. Idolatry in the Old Testament, the Torah bans the worship of any images or idols. Despite repeated prohibitions against making idols, the people of Israel worship idols throughout the Torah, the prophets, and the writings, commonly called the Old Testament. All right, so again we have there, we have for sale, that's the H 6459. All right, idol image, i.e. a shape or fashion worship icon as an L or representing an L. Note, though a carved stone or wood image in most contexts, it may include metal, metal cast images as well, i.e. the golden calf that, that uh, Godard loves so much. It, it's, it's, what, what happened, who, who got leprosy? Oh, him right there, look, 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 let me tell you something about these pictures, okay? <laughs> It's hard to find a black man with, with the golden calf, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, well. Uh, that's you know. right. 
Look, look at that. There you go. <laughs> All right, the root word for that is, is Passar, the age 6458. Hew, cut, carve, chisel, i.e. pierce or cut by digging into an object, stone or wood. Note, in context, this motion can make writing or construct buildings. All right, then we have Exodus 34 and 1. Yahuwah said to Moses, cut for yourself two tablets of stone like the first. Now I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. So it's have their idol as a pagan and material effigy, a sculpture or model of a person that is worshiped as a representation or in lieu of a deity. Right. So as you can see, those two representations up there. And is, is that black enough for you right there with the wood sculpture? It looks okay. like a dark. It, 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 it looks like a gatekeeper, don't it? <laughs> Idols, you should not make idols for yourselves or erect an image or pillar. And you shall not set up a figured stone in, in your land to bow down to it, for I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. All right. Going to get into some examples of idolatry. These are commonly called um, household Elohims or household gods, um, known in Hebrew as teraphim. Miniature idols small enough for their owners to keep in their homes or to carry with them when traveling. Alright. And that is the H8655. Alright. Genesis 31, 34. Now Rachel had taken the household Alahines or household gods and put them in the camel saddle and sat on them. Laban felt all about the tent but did not find them. Alright. Some more examples of it. We have a refra, which is the root word. Alright. It means to mend by stitching, i.e. to cure. To cure, cause to heal, physician, repair, thoroughly make whole. And we have the Greek meaning of it, which is called icon, an object not necessarily three-dimensional, which has been formed to resemble a person, God, animal, etc., likeness, or image. As you can see there, you got the, what's that symbol right there with the doctor on it? What's the symbol in red right there? But what does it represent? Uh, and on the other side of it is a like, sun talisman. Go ahead. You know. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, like you, if you look right at those, those look like two snakes. They like are. like a pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like we see all the time. You know how you see the pharmacy and and you see with the snakes going up and everything. That's 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 actually pretty common today. Yes, it is. Anything the snake's else? going up the pole. I was just trying to give you an example that this stuff has been around for a long time, right? And trying to mask it as something as something yeah. positive by saying that it's healing, but we all know that it's actually idolatry, right? Self gets deep. Didn't uh, uh, Moshe know? Uh, didn't um, I already had a fast uh, 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 a serpent. a pole with the mm -hmm. snakes on it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good point. <laughs> All right. So therefore, this is, okay. So I'm going to get into idolatry forbidden. Deuteronomy 4:15 through 24. Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully, since you saw no form on the day that Yahuwah spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Beware, at least you act corruptly by making a carved image for yourselves in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female. So this is the first time the Muslims warning the people about idolatry, right? So the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the water under the earth. We're gonna talk about those two pictures in a second. And beware at least you raise your eyes to um, heaven or Shamaim, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the hosts of Shamaim or heaven, you be drawn away and bow down to them and serve them. Things that Yahuwah your Elohim has allotted to all the peoples under the whole heaven. But Yahuwah has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, out of Egypt, to be a people of his own inheritance as you are this day. 
Furthermore, Yahuwah was angry with me because of you, and he swore that I should not cross the Jordan and that I should not enter the good land that Yahuwah your Elohim is giving you for an inheritance. Now, quick question. What did Moses mean when he said that Yahuwah was mad at me because of you? I believe, if I remember correctly, it's because he used the wrong staff to to to, to, right. to rock, and then he didn't give the Most High um, praise when he used that staff. He was supposed to use Aaron's staff, actually, if I remember correctly. Okay, gatekeeper, did you have something? No, no, gatekeeper, say go ahead. If I'm not mistaken, the Most High told him to speak. Um, to the um, to the rock, and he got angry with the people, and he struck the rock several times. And he used the wrong staff. I think he was supposed to use Aaron's staff. Mm -hmm. Am I correct, Maury? You're yes. correct. <laughs> okay. Which I just one? wanted to make it's sure. <laughs> it's two of us here. Which one? The one that's speaking. All right. All right. So this. Oh, come on with this. I say. All right. For I must die in the land, and I must not go over the Jordan. But you shall go over and take possession of, the, of that good land. That, that care lest you forget the covenant of Yahuwah, your Elohim, which he had made with you, and make a carved image for the form of anything that Yahuwah, your Elohim, has forbidden you. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, is a consuming fire and a jealous Elohim. All right. So who can tell me about these, these pictures, starting with the first, the top one? is represents a perpetual adoration of the blessed sacrament. But what do you see in that picture? The sun. The sun. The you see the sun and the cross, right? The sun. Yes. <laughs> the sun. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. Don't. You, you want to talk in the mic? We can't hear you. What else do you see in there besides the sun and the, and the cross? It's some stuff that the Mori just said. In that image on the top, it's called a monstrance in, uh, in Catholicism. And inside the center, I believe that's where they keep the Eucharist, which is that piece of bread that is magically transformed into the literal body of Mashiach. There you go. I know Gil was going to come through. I knew he was going to come through. All right. All right, so what about the bottom one? This is the sun tablet of King Nabu. I ain't gonna say the rest of it. I can't say it. it like a giant. Well, that's a whole nother story. We ain't gonna go there. We just wanna, what's at the bottom? It's just sun worship, uh, sun worshiping. And then you see the tablets. It looks like, yeah, sun, it looks like sun worshiping mm -hmm. engraved. You say what now? Yeah, are the people worshiping the, the king or are they worshiping yeah. the sun and the king? They're worshiping the sun and the king. There you go. All right, so Moses told the people not to make any image or statue since they didn't see any form of Yahuwah when he spoke to them at the mountain. Uh, he was not seen, therefore an idol could, so therefore no idol could be made. Okay. Man. I say, I say, I say. Hmm. So is that you're going to make me get up and walk over there, huh? Yeah. yeah am I going to have to walk? Okay. Let's go walk. All right. Hmm. My goodness. Hey, hey. <laughs> it, ain't opera, it ain't operator error. All right, consuming fire, all right. So let's talk about consume. There's the H398, a call. It's a root to eat, literally or figur figuratively, at all. Burn up, consume, devour. And then you have destroy, ruin, consume, formally eat, i.e. cause destruction of objects. Even take biological life as a figurative extension of eating as consuming as a consuming process. Um, and you shall consume all the peoples that Yahuwah your Elohim will give over to you. 
your eyes shall not pity them, neither shall you serve their Elohims, for that will be a snare to you. So you can see the theme here, you know, Father just plain out did not like idolatry, did he? And there was a grave consequence, just like with the passive words from last week, you know, it can utterly destroy you for not following his commandment, correct? All right, um, it's gonna have to stand over here. Oh my goodness. All right. Jealous is the H7067, it's Kana. He's jealous, i.e. pertaining to having a feeling of ill will ranging even to anger based on a perceived advantage or a desire of exclusivity in a relationship, in a relationship, all right? So, i.e. jealous uh, is a title of Yahuwah. And the root word of that will be um, Kana, which is 7065, and it basically means the same thing, but it, it includes in there to be envious, all right? For you shall worship no other Alihim, for Yahuwah, whose name is Jealous, is a Jealous El or Alihim. I'm going to stay right here. Stay right here. And we also see a little example of this in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, 4Q368, fragment 2.6. You shall break, for Yahuwah shall worship no other Alihim, for Yahuwah is called Jealous, a Jealous Alihim. Abhor it because it is an and a, uh, an anathema, something or someone that one vehemently dislikes. And you shall not bow down in front of another Alahim, for your Alahim is a jealous Alahim. Take care not to make a covenant with the occupants of the land. They whore after their Alahims and make sacrifices to them, lest they entice you and you eat part of their sacrifices and accept their daughters for your sons. And your daughters and their daughters will whore after their Alahims and will make your sons whore after. All right. Any questions so far? You see where we're going with this thing? Are we all track? All right. So see some warnings going on. So let's see who gave some warnings about all of this. Can anyone name someone who warned the people that this will happen unless they obey? And when I say that this will happen, I mean being consumed. Just read one. Huh? I, it's, uh, somebody Moses. need a mic. Huh? Moses. Moses. All oh, right. All right. It goes Moses. Anybody else? Any other? Anybody else in them? Yeah. Ua. Yeah, there you go. All right. Let's start with the obvious. Uh, Yahuwah warned them. For thus says Yahuwah to the men of Yehuda and Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, break up your follow ground and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to Yahuwah, remove the foreskin of your hearts, O men of, of Yehuda and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Least my wrath go forth like fire and burn with none to quench it because of the evil of your deeds. So my question is, what did he say before this? Did he give them a chance? Hmm? <laughs> yes. yes, because he warned them. He gave them. A, he told them ahead of time, "This is what is going to befall you if you do not heed my warnings." Is that how he said? It? Is that how he said? It? Okay. Yeah, Jeremiah 4, 1 and 2, if you return on Israel, declares Yahuwah, to me you should return. If you remove your detestable things from my presence and do not waver, and if you swear as Yahuwah lives in truth, in justice, and in righteousness, the nations shall bless themselves in, in him, and in him shall the esteem. All right, so yeah, he did give them a chance to repent, but of course they didn't do it, right? So the next person to warn them was Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. Oh my goodness. There we go. Oh Yahuwah, do not do not your eyes look for look for truth. You have struck them down, but they felt no anguish. You have consumed them, but but, but they refuse to take correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to repent. Then I said, These are only the poor. They have no sense, for they do not know the way of Yahuwah the justice of their Elohim. I will go to, to the great and will speak to them, for they know the way of Yahuwah, the justice of their Elohim. 
for they all alike have broken the yoke, they have burst the bonds. Therefore a lion from the forest shall strike them down, and a wolf from the desert shall devastate them. A leper is watching their cities, everyone who goes out of them shall be torn in pieces. Because their transgressions are many, their apostrophes are great. What can we take from that? Furthermore, was this past tense or future? Well, the same goes for us. I mean, the same goes. Is is that what your question? I'm sorry, Maury. I, I can't hear you very well. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, what what do you take out of this? What I take out of this is the same thing that he was telling them. The same thing goes for us. As we read and study the Torah, you know, he's giving us also ample warning. Follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Follow the Torah. Listen, heed the warnings so that we will not be torn to pieces because of our transgressions and so that we won't have, you know, all these apostates against us, regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of this world that we live in, we still have to try we not not try but do we have to you know strive to 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 do it because the father don't want to hear excuses that's it that's how i see it anybody else that's good yo anybody else y'all just gonna let yoko be the one talking <laughs> oh, right. i'm sorry what was that why <laughs> only gonna let you talk no 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 don't don't let me talk i mean no 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 i mean if if, if he asks some questions and and it's just dead silence well i'm a part of the mishpaka i'm gonna answer i mean yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we just making fun of you we got you all right you know every, everybody needs to join in now come on now <laughs> i wish someone else would join Please. <laughs> Paul warned them, um, see that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they do not, um, for if they did not escape when they refused him when, warned, when, he, when he warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. And at that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase yet once more indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is, things that have been made in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to Elohim acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our Elohim is a consuming fire. What was Paul referring to here? What was the question what was Paul referring to here, especially when he says, if, we, if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape from when we reject him from who warns from heaven. So what was he referring to? Somebody, I can't hear you. Say that again. The Holy Spirit. Oh, he, said, he was saying that he was referring to the Torah. He was referring to our Savior, Yahushua. Mm -hmm. Who spoke and warned us of things to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need a mic over there. Yeah. In the back. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Um, I guess I make sure this is right. The one from Earth would be. Moses, Moshe, and the one from heaven will be Yahusha. That's what I was thinking. No? Yes. That's right. <laughs> I was just waiting for Yoko to come up. I know Yoko was going to. <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going <laughs> to be a little you gonna, you silent. Gonna, you gonna, you know, going to take a little break on that one? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna break on that one. I mean, I could answer it, but I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> no, go ahead. We just play. Because I want my other, I want the other Mishpaka to 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 join in. I, I don't want to just, you know, answer all the questions. I want them to answer too. All right. 
<laughs> so who else do you think could, could have warned the people about their idolatry ways? The prophets. The prophets. Yeah. But remember when I read um, what Moses said, you know, that was the first time. You know, he had the second time. He sang a little, 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 little doohickey. The song of Moses. I think Maury gonna sing it for me. You gonna sing it for me? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was just waiting on uh, Yoko and, and, and we need, and we need a beat. We need, we need some music to go for it. Oh, 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 oh. Here, here we go right here. Because I can't sing it until my voice is dry. Really? You guys want me to sing this now? I think they spoke it in Hebrew, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, brother. You you go ahead and do it because uh, yeah, we already had this discussion that this is this is supposed to be done by uh, a man anyway. So go ahead, knock it out. All right, all right. I'll read it. All right, give ear. No, you got no. You got to sing it. Oh no, it's got to uh -uh, be sung. Uh -uh. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the music, but y'all sing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Give ear, O heaven, and I will speak. And let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. For I will proclaim the name of Yahuwah, Ascribe greatness to our Elohim. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. The Elohim of faithfulness and without iniquity, just, just and upright is he. They have dealt corruptly with him. They are no longer his children because they are blemished. All right. Oh, oh. move that real quick. They are a crooked and twisted generation. Do you thus repay you, who are you, you foolish and senseless people? Is not he your father who created you, who made you and established you? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of my generations. Ask your father, and he will show you your elders, and they will te tell you. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when he divided mankind, he fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of Elohim. But Yahuwah's portion is his people, Jacob, his allotted heritage. He found him in a desert land, and in the howling waste of the wilderness, he encircled him. He cared for him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that flutters over its young, spreading out its wings, catching them, bearing them on, on its pinions, Yahuwah alone guided him. No foreign Elohim was with him. He made him ride on the high places of the land, and he ate the, the produce of the field. And he suckled him with honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. Curds from the herd and milk from the flock with fat of lambs, rams of Bashan and goats. With the very finest of the wheat, and you drank foamy wine made from the blood of the grape. But Yashron grew fat and kicked. You grew fat, stout and sleek. Then he forsook Elohim with who made him and scuffed at the rock of his salvation. All right. They stirred him to jealousy with strange Elohims, with abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons that were no Elohims, to Elohims they had never known, to new Elohims that had come recently whom your fathers had never dreaded. You were unmindful of the rock that bore you, and you forgot the Elohim who gave you birth. Yahuwah saw it and spurned them because of the provocation of his sons and his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end will be, for they are a perverse generation, children in whom is no faithfulness. They have made me jealous with what is no Elohim. They have provoked me to anger with their idols. So I will make them jealous with those who are no people. I will provoke their, them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger, and it burns to the depths of Sheol, devours the earth and its increase, and sets on fire the foundations of the mountains. And I will heap disasters upon them. I will spin my arrows on them. They shall be wasted with hunger and devoured, and devoured by plague 
and poisonous pestilence. I will send the teeth of beasts against them with the venom of things that crawl in the dust. Outdoors the sword shall bereave and endures terror for young men and women alike, the nursing child with the man of gray hairs. I would have said I will cut them to pieces. I will wipe them from the human memory. Had I not feared provocation by the enemy, least their adversaries shall misunderstand. Least they shall, should say, O oh, hand is triumphant. It was not Yahuwah. Our hand is triumphant. It was not Yahuwah who did all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. If they were wise, they would understand this. They would discern their, la their latter end. How could one have chased a thousand and to have put 10,000 to fight unless their rock had sold them and Yahuwah had given them up. For their rock is not as, as our rock. Our enemies are by themselves. For their vine comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are a grace of poison. The clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of serpents and the cruel venom of apps. Is not this laid up in the is is not this laid up in store with me, sealed up in my treasuries? Vengeance is mine and recompense for the time when their foot shall slip, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and their doom comes swiftly. For Yahuwah will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none remaining bond or free. Then he will say, Where are their Alahims of rock in which they took refuge, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you. Let them be your protection. See now that I, I even I, am he, and there is no Elohim beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and swear as I live forever. If I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand takes hold on judgment, I will take vengeance on my adversaries and will repay those who hate me. I will make arrows drink, drink, drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. With the blood of the slain and the captives from the long haired heads of the enemy, rejoice with him, O heavens, bow down to him and all the Elohims for, for he avenges the blood of his children and takes vengeance on his adversaries. He repays those who hate him and cleanses his land. All right. Moses came and recited all the words of this song in the hearing of the people. He and, he and um, Joshua, the son of Nun, and when Moses had finished speaking all these words to Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words by which I am warning you today, that you may command them to your children, that they may be careful to do all the words of this law. For it is, for it is no empty word for you, but your very life. And by this word you shall live long in the land that you are going to Jordan to possess. So now my question would be, is this still happening today? Well, do I have permission to answer it or should I wait? Go away. Go away here, you go. Yes. <laughs> go ahead. Who was that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, it does. Anybody else? Anybody can you explain why? What, yes. What's going on today in Absolutely. this world? What's going on today in this world that, that represents what, what was said in this song? Everything, disobedience, not listening, not remembering uh, what the Most High and what the prophets have said. But what specifically is going on? About today? following the, the, you know, taking heed to listen uh, to what was said in the past. Law, statutes, commandments, listening to the Most High about uh, not, not having any uh, kind of uh, adultery uh, and that the Most High is a, is, is a jealous L. All these types of things that that he had been talking about, it's going on today. Everything. Okay, but what punishments? What, what? There's some plagues that are going on right now. Right, so what punishments did, can, can you see? So in Las Vegas, you got, like, what is it, grasshoppers or something? Uh, a whole bunch of locusts in that area. Punishment? Oh, wow. Yeah. There, there's a lot. There's a lot of punishments that's going on to, be, to begin with. His people have... have um, have fallen. We have we, sicknesses and diseases upon us, cancers. Mm -hmm. Bad weather is, is killing people as well. There, there are problems with that. 
got a lot of shark attacks. So there are a lot of things that are going on around the country that seems to be um, because of the bad behavior of, of the people. Mm -hmm. okay. Caleb, you got something? So you have people who, um, like, let's say they'll they'll do messed up things to us, or they have they treat a certain way, and they feel they can do that because in their heads, our Elohim has forsaken us or left us, or they think that their our Elohim must not really be all that great if we they can do those type of things to us, which is basically one of the things the song said where, um, I would allow them to overtake you, but I don't want them to think that I'm too weak to handle you, so I, I'm gonna go ahead and defend you. So it's basically just like what Yoko was saying, you know, you got some of the things that happened to us specifically, you know, all the murders, all the killings and everything, and you got your people who were saying, well, why is this happening to us? It was supposed to be God, right? But just like Yoko said, you know, no one's following the commandments, are they? No one's doing anything that he says, so what will make him want to save us, right? All right. Anybody else got anything to say? Well, this nation as a whole, has turned away from you who I, I don't really actually don't even think they really actually ever did follow you who commandments and look what's going on there's so much division going on i mean we're i can't see us lasting very much longer as a nation before evil completely takes over no we live in Babylon. you know this place is messed up well you know? this nation this this is egypt let's let's be honest and be real this is egypt okay this, this whole nation is Egypt. You know, the father said, you know, he's going to bring us back again into Egypt. This is Egypt. Okay, this is, this is a, a pagan nation to begin with. So, you know, it, it, is, it is what it is, but there is hope for his, for his people and those that want to follow the Most High. Yeah, I agree with that, you know, and, you know, yet, you know, there are very little of us here in this nation of millions and millions of people there's very very few of us you know um i mean it's it's like it's it's, it's i don't know <laughs> well and you I, know what i this love this country because we still have the, the freedom to even do what we're doing right now as a group there's places where we couldn't do that but it's still the way it is you know yeah, so I'm going to believe what Chronicles say. If my people call me by my name, who humble themselves, turn from their evil ways, and pray, then He will heal us from Shamayim and heal the land. First of all, we got to get back to the land because this is a place that we should have never came. But due to our forefathers, we are here in every in, in every situation there is. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can we can you know get back to the father the father is waking up his people so all we have to do is just follow the law statutes and commandments and and not do what our forefathers did yeah so as we can see most if not all these things have remained the same as i've said before nothing will change because the people won't change therefore the ultimate end will come upon us what we can do is just remain focused and keep the commandments. All right. Yeah, all right. So um, right here, I have some examples of the use of Hasso Alahim's or God's. Um, this took away from the scope of the lesson, but it got kind of deep, uh, especially when it came to the divination. So um, you have three methods of divination um, I'll describe here. Shaking of the arrows is bellomancy. You have consulting the house of Allah or gods, and that's necromancy. And then you have the examination of the liver of a sacrificed victim, right, which is hepatoscopy. Right. So that's some, some stuff right there that if you want to you know, look at that on, on your own time, you go ahead because it, it gets kind of deep. I thought it might be a little interesting for you all to uh, check out. Okay? Any questions pertaining to the lesson? I know we all talked a lot about it. Is anything specific? Okay, here we go. All right, so I, I think we, um, you know, just to kind of put a lot of this, uh, the discussions that we have together here, um, 
understanding you know what idolatry is and idol worship from people to things to um, um, material things like that and you know I guess as we go forward even like with the Moses song everything is showing that what they've done in the past is still happening today what looks like it's going to happen in the future and the same thing that happened or the things that the, uh, the judgment that happened for that is going to happen again so if we learn about what's been taking place in the past it'll be better help us understand what's going to happen in the future and I think that everyone should kind of start understanding that the father's not playing with us when it comes to idolatry, disobedience, uh, and uh, maybe in the future we'll talk the difference between what rebellion, which he was sharing earlier, uh, the difference between rebellion and someone just not understanding. Some people may be defiant because they don't understand versus rebellion. Rebellion is something that they do understand, however they refuse to do something that they do have knowledge of. So, you know, maybe that's an, another uh, lesson in itself. But anyway, I think that, uh, you know, uh, what's been talked about today, that we should consider, you know, if we have any idols within our minds and our hearts, uh, do we focus on other things outside of the Father? Especially, we, in, as everyone uh, was sharing graciously, as they commonly call it, um, about, you know, what they starting to see is happening in the end time. I mean, things are happening in the water, things are happening in the air, things are happening with one another. Pestilence, all this stuff is happening. Are these birth pains? Are these things that would consider Jacob's trouble? Are, are all these things starting to help us to see that he's on his way and are we ready? Are we going to still continue to be idolatrous and things like that? We'll see. Anybody else? All right, if all hearts and minds are clear, we can stand and close. Laura, you want to take us out? Baruch Atah B'Yehud Malek HaOlam. Told our Father for another lesson, Father, that you have given the more to help us consider what we have in our hearts and our minds and how we deal with things on a daily basis, with one, not just with one another, but individually, personal. We ask you, Father, continue to strengthen us as we continue to learn your word. We ask you, Father, to pour your ruach on every one of us, that we may be able to understand his word and comprehend it and, and share with others, Father, and get a personal relationship with you, Father, outside of just reading something, Father. I know our desire is to study, to show ourselves approved, and that's our desire, Father, to really get closer to you. And ultimately, Father, by getting closer to you with one another, we all we become a family, mishpachas, someone that you can be pleased and well with, Father, in our hearts and in our minds. And we thank you, Father, for the opportunity. You didn't have to give us this opportunity, but you had given it to us, Father. And we thank you, Father, for slowing us down. Whatever we've been through in our lives, Father, that you opened up doors and closed doors to get our attention. And we say, Torah, for all those things that you've done. As we close out, Father, to break bread together, we continue to have discussions about what it is that you want us to do and give you praise and honor, Father, that we were made and created to do. We ask these things in Yahushua HaMashiach's name. Hello, Yahuwah, and I mean.